so glad that you're with me here inside the Basket Maker Studio. I am really, really honored to have a longtime friend of mine and fellow maker uh, from South Carolina, Nancy Basket, with me. Nancy, thank you so much for being in the studio with me today. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's wonderful. Absolutely. I was just thinking in getting ready for this, I was like, who else loves kudzu more than me and you? And I don't know anybody. That <laughs> well, for hey, for, that that's right. That's right. Well, hey, for folks that are just getting to know you and, and that sort of thing, why don't you give us the kind of a little background about who you are, what you do creatively, that sort of thing, and then we'll jump into a little bit of your backstory. Sure. I'm Nancy Basket. I love kudzu. I've been in the South for uh, 35 years or something now. Wow. I'm from Washington State. I found kudzu after being uh, a coiler with pine needles. I wanted to come here to get pine needles. Uh, when I came, pine needles were $14 a pound. Now they're up to $40. Yeah, yeah crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I like uh, getting my own stuff. I like going into the forest, and that's one of the reasons I came. And I wanted to be closer to the Cherokees so I could learn some of the stories to teach my kids. Yeah, yeah. I have that kind of background. You know, it's amazing. I think myself starting out in Boy Scouts and all that kind of stuff, just loving being in the woods. And I think for all of us that have itchy fingers, you know, those natural materials kind of call to us. And um, I first found kudzu in, in college when I found a, I, crazy enough, I found a book on basket making, like on willow baskets, but I didn't know anything about it. But I had a bunch of kudzu out behind my apartment right. building. And I was like, I bet that, <laughs> that I could use yeah. this, you know, and so what was your first kind of foray into kudzu? Did you just see it on the side of the road? Or, I mean, how did that happen? Well, being a bad pine needle basket maker, I lived in Union, South Carolina. They had a kudzu festival. They said, can you make some uh, baskets out of kudzu? I said, sure. I've been a basket maker 10 years now. I can do that. Yeah. And I went out, whipped it up, and they fell apart in four days. And I thought, <laughs> what the heck is going on? And then I remembered that you have to respect the plants. I'm not from here. And if you don't slow yourself down to understand the plant speaking to you, you're not going to do it right or mm. well, because mm. everything deserves respect, whether yeah. you believe it's sentient or not. I happen to, to believe that. So yeah. I went back to the kudzu and I apologized. I said, I'm sorry. I'm northerner. Uh, I'm going to slow down. Tell me how you want to be used. And what I heard is use us for paper, leave the trees alone. Wow. Paper, I'm a basket maker. You know, I'm living with everybody. I don't know if you've noticed that about me or not, there, man. <laughs> but you know, we have to be a little bit um, humorous. When stuff doesn't go right, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. Yeah. It just that means that you know one more thing that doesn't work or how it needs to be used a different way. Yeah. When I heard that, I made the kudzu leaves into paper after making that with a private school that had no art education ever. They're 25 years. Then I learned how to do the baskets. Wow. If you're on a journey, other people who aren't artists might not understand it, but it doesn't make it untrue. I get dreams all the time. I just go ahead and do what I'm told to do. It might not make sense to other people but you learn something from that. At least I have. Yeah. I so appreciate the, the spiritual component to your work. Cause I approach my work in the, in the same way. I, I mean, I've having dreams over the years or just feeling, I remember early on in my career, even when I didn't have language for it, I knew that I really was connecting much deeper uh, in my spiritual practice in the woods than I was anywhere else. And I think you would you would say the same thing. There's there's something inside of us, I think, as makers that that really resonates with that. And our work kind of becomes the the overflow of that, if you will. I mean, do you kind of feel that like your your heart and and all that you're you're you know receiving spiritually and that sort of thing, all of that's coming out through your work and, and becoming sort of the the unique language that you that you create as a maker. I think that we have um, a path into what I call the universal library in the sky. You got to mm -hmm. be careful when you're teaching in school as an artist in education like me. We got to be real careful. 
But I say, go to the um, basket maker and you know, the library in the sky and check out whatever book or video or tape that you need or YouTube now and uh, learn that, do what the, you're told and then just give thanks to the librarian. <laughs> I don't get in trouble that way. I love it. I love it. You know what I also love? I love that, you know, I just, I just really believe this, you know, that we're really a conduit for so much more than just techniques and, and materials that we really are, you know, releasing something supernatural through our work. We, re we receive that as makers and we also get to, I think people feel that when they, when they sense our work. I've had so many people over the years, I know you have too, of coming up to your work or seeing you at a show or whatever. And they're like, wow, you, you sense something, you feel something. And I just, mm -hmm. I love that, that part of being a, being a maker. I do too. I like being out in the cathedral. Everything that the creator has made is there. So you yeah. get to spend time, you root yourself. I say root, I'm from the North. Um, <laughs> and that's important too. Buying stuff in a store is fine to teach classes with, but a friend of mine had me sit down and learn some techniques. I don't want to do that, it's read. Excuse me for all my read basket making friends. We I love you. We love you. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I don't want to just do it and learn the technique. Fine. So I did it once, but it's not the same with other materials. You have to use them and see how they work and how they won't. Yeah. Just like you told me, you're working with daylilies and iris leaves or something. You know, they're yeah. in the yard. They stay forever down here in the South. And why not use something like that? to be a little bit different. Yeah, I absolutely. think the natural materials for me is the only way to go. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I always say it for me, it never was really about making baskets. It was just an excuse to get in the woods. And then I, I thought it was a, a great overflow from that. So you mentioned materials and I wanted to, you know, kind of zero in on that because I know a lot of folks who are wanting to get started in, in basket making with naturals will be you know, watching this and connecting with our channel and everything. And um, I know when I started using kudzu, I couldn't hardly find anything out there on it. Um, you know, there was very little written about it and that sort of thing. And I kind of developed my way of doing it, of like harvesting the, the runners and drying them and that sort of thing. You have a completely different methodology of, of using kudzu that creates a completely different aesthetic. So kind of talk about how you use that material because it's what the look that you get is extraordinary and um, and so very much you. Well, thank you. I'm more primitive, you know, <laughs> and I don't care if there are whiskers on kudzu. I take the thumb or thicker pieces that grow up into the trees and I split them. You know, I have to pull it down. Yeah. Uh, as you split them, you can make them as fine as you want to. You can cord it. You can braid it. You can make your own. Uh, sea grass if you want to out of your natural materials and then as you coil it together you get more of a rustic feel and it's very different yeah um, you can make larger structures faster making those out of pine needles would drive you nuts it would send you to the institution exactly. from whence it said you have to make baskets to get out <laughs> so extrapolate a little bit yeah use a thicker coil and i found that out when i was working for the movie um, young Indiana Jones, a television series. Yeah. They wanted a hot air balloon, but they didn't have time. They wanted it on the weekend. Oh my God. So they said, make it, you know, about this big and make it strong enough to where the dog, you know, Indiana Jones' dog leaps into my basket, make it strong enough so he doesn't fall out because he he's a highly paid actor. So I made the bottom plywood. They didn't see that anyway. And you coiled it together with wow. cat tail leaf because they're long. Yeah, And it worked. Okay, the same idea. No, it doesn't look woven like a hot air balloon, but that's the best they could get on a weekend. And they wanted me to make a second one, but the first one took 15 hours. My hands wouldn't move. So I said, no, <laughs> one, get the shot and go with it. I love it. So love you it. learn, you know, how to do things with the amount of time you have or with the knowledge a person has when you're teaching them, start small. My process is more process oriented, not product oriented. Yeah. Because you might not get to see me again. I'm lots of different places. So here's what it will do. Here's what it won't do. You like to use the bark. I use everything. I don't waste a thing. Yeah. Now, when you are harvesting, um, 
you know, my background was, I guess, when I started looking at baskets, I started thinking like Appalachian egg baskets and that sort of thing. Right. So I kind of wanted this tight, fine look. Right. And so I always got frustrated with my kudzu because it would, it would, you know, I would pull it green and make it and then it would dry and shrink oh. and it, it, it would get oh, loose no. and ah, all that. And so I started, yeah. you know, I don't know how many years ago now, years and years ago, splitting those runners and letting them dry and then rehydrating them and that sort of thing. But when, so that, you know, it's kind of been my process over the years of, of doing it that way to get that kind of look. But for you, like, do you harvest, I end up harvesting in the winter time when the sap is down, but do you harvest all year long or do you harvest just all year long? Year? Mm -hmm. All year. Yep. Um, being an artist in education, you're teaching all year round. You have to find something that works. There was yeah. only one year that the kudzu froze so hard. It was rock solid when I tried to cut it. <laughs> it was about four, well, maybe 10 years ago now. Wow. So you find out what works and what doesn't. I take the green runners and ferment them and make cloth. This wow. is my loom behind me. So I'm making kudzu cloth now. And that is that. an Asian technique. We yeah. have to learn look and see what everybody else is doing and then extrapolate on that. Yeah, that's so good. So Nancy, you're kind of known for coiling and that's kind of how I first, you know, got into your work, seeing it and that sort of thing. But you do a lot more than just coiling. You're talking about paper making and you, I know you do dyeing and you're doing cloth now, but you're also doing these huge installation pieces. I just saw one at a restaurant the other day and it was so exciting, but talk, how did you get into doing these huge, installation lighting pieces they are incredible well thank you i met um robert nicholas he's now at marquee in Asheville. yeah, yeah a friend and of mine he actually. asked me well mine too he's <laughs> pretty marvelous he said hey can you make a lamp i said how big i said sure okay five feet round and um uh, 20 inches down i mean there's all kinds of yeah. uh, styles that different restaurants want I have architectural things that I make, my giant, you know, sculptures. I have that online. Some of the designers call me and ask for different measurements. And I started making the lamps and that's weaving. Yeah. But I have to get my wire and I have to get boxes. I mean, I just real uh, primitive, but it's rustic anyway. And it kind of twists and warps. I like that look. It's much more natural than weaving it over a uh, blacksmith cage. But I do yeah. that for some people who want more rigid. Yeah, I've made uh, nine baskets for the Pittsburgh Zoo. They have a restaurant called Jumbo there. They wanted them five feet round and they're random free form. Like uh, it's a mimicry of the African weaver bird Yeah, because they're, um, they've got that African theme going. So what do you want? Okay, I'll think it up. That's the nature of being an artist, right? You never say no when somebody comes and wants to <laughs> want you to make something, right? So pretty much. <laughs> well, just like with ribbed baskets, I'm starting to make them now. I hesitated because I'm a coiler. Yeah. But now that I'm a weaver of large things and I can coil sculptures that are eight feet long, eight feet wide, why can't I do a ribbed basket? So a friend of mine asked me to teach a class. I don't know how to do it. She goes, I bet you can figure it out. So I look at a YouTube video. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I made one myself to make sure I could do it. And now I love that. I see one behind you there. Yeah. The colors of kudzu, the wisteria, and I'm using autumn <laughs> olive. Yeah, this my, one is- uh, Is that my grapevine? Yeah, this is actually uh, bittersweet and grapevine. And then I wove it with, with kudzu but yeah i've i've had this thing for years i love it but this is how i started old rib basket so when i started doing twining and more organic stuff i thought this is great like <laughs> this was so hard on my hands and and all that i love the you know softer materials and all that so softer forms and well twining is calling my name but i'm resisting the call so far <laughs> i don't like the feel of um not knowing what i'm doing yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I do that once in a while, or I take a, a class at a folk school, yeah. Dr. Campbell. Yeah, sure. Just so I know what it's like for my students not to know what they're doing. 
Yeah. So I can yeah. have a little more pity on him because I tease him a lot. <laughs> I find out if you tease people, they're not so worried about getting it right. Who cares? Yeah. Just do it once. You can't make yours look like mine. I've had yeah. 40 years experience. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I, I, don't, I don't do technical like you do. Yours are masterful. Um. I can get away with a little bit of rustic, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they have a story about it, write a card about it, and they just like this. Story. That's right. Hey, talk about the difference, you know, between making a basket that's this big and making a basket that's this big. Because I know I did a, um, I've done a, I mean, you know, I do those sculptural pieces. So I've done, you know, some right. pieces that are like 14 feet long and that sort of thing. But I'd, I'd never done, those are a lot, I mean, they're not that much different in that you're just making more pieces to go along in them but I did a piece for a hotel maybe two years ago yeah. right before COVID and um that thing was like 48 inches like it was a big random weave orb mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. was like I mean it turned out beautifully but I was like oh my goodness like this is a different world I mean just the support right. of that as you're okay. as you're working so talk about that because it's not just you know you just scale it up and there it is I mean there's some really different things you have to keep in mind with that I had to learn some uh, math and I don't do math well. That's why I don't do the plates and the twills. It makes me crazy. Yeah, so yeah. I have friends who are mathematicians, you yeah, know, yeah. as eighth grade, you know how to figure out some stuff. Um, but they'll tell you, you have to have three times plus a little longer to make a one foot section. Mm. So you have to figure this out a little bit. Sometimes if you're working with a curve, I'll have my friends, this is what I want to create, but I'll have them help me do that. Yeah. Um, you just have to experiment a little bit. Like I said, with the wire, then I have to cover that wire. I don't want anybody seeing it. So yeah. you have to wrap all that. It just takes maybe a week or two weeks to make something that's five feet big. Yeah. And you yeah. just do a little bit at a time. Yeah. I can't work more. You can't wear yourself out. Some people try to make 20 baskets a day. Well, good luck with that. You got to yeah, exactly. purchase all the material, you know? I'm lucky to make one small one and I know yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I make the tiny little baskets as big as my thumb too. Mm. And that takes a different set of muscle memory. Some people can work that small, some people can't. Yeah. I like it because I want to keep my fingers functional as long as I can, the older I get. Yeah. So I make paper for a while, I make the big ones, I make smaller ones, and then I'm using different parts of my hands. That's so good just to, I think, ergonomics for people to realize. I remember mm -hmm. when I went from kind of making baskets for fun for 13 years to then I moved up here to Asheville and got my studio and just went into making baskets and being in the studio like six or eight hours a day. I remember I started in July. I want to say we opened the studio in July of 2011. And by that December, I had tennis elbows so bad I Where couldn't even... Go? I mean, you couldn't. And I was like, okay, I got to find a rhythm that works for me. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's really, really huge to listen to your body in, in making. So, Because if not, you're going to uh, have carpal tunnel syndrome or something, and then you can't do it anymore anyway. Yeah. yeah. So pace yourself and price your work accordingly. If yeah. you, know, you can work at McDonald's for $11 an hour now, you might as well get something for your time and put it where somebody understands that, like the marquee, Absolutely. and not try to sell your work compared to a basket made in China. We don't yeah. have the same living That's condition. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Now, Nancy, I know one of the things you're passionate about is, is teaching. You've mentioned that several times, but you go to these, uh, I don't know, um, all these rendezvous and gatherings and uh, of people that love uh, primitive skills and that sort of thing. I always think I want to go hang out with Nancy on the weekend at one of these one day. <laughs> these are so fun, but talk Come about your, your passion for teaching because you are just all over the place sharing what you know with, with others. I love the kids in school. I used to go to uh, basket conventions, but some of those older women said if I knew this was coiling, I wouldn't have come. I wouldn't take your car. I mean, they got nasty. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not doing this anymore. Exactly. I'm going to go into the schools where the little kids will love just working with something that they would respect. Yeah. One little girl said something so wonderful to me. She said, Miss Basket, I don't see weeds growing anymore. I see baskets. Mm, I love that. And that's important. 
Um, I, think there's, so I think it's too, there's this, you know, just both of us, the perspective that we come from, I, there's a redemptive nature to what we do, right? Of being able to see life and see purpose in things that everybody else calls no good and, and weeds and all that. I mean, that's, that's beautiful. You can teach a lot of life lessons of loving and kindness when you go into schools and yeah. you can do it very respectfully. The kids understand that kind of an energy and you and I are getting older. I helped start the first basketry guild in the United States in modern times in Seattle, Washington. Wow. It was actually a mother deal. And they're gonna do an interview with me because I was the president at 29 when the people I founded it around were in their 60s. Wow. Wow. So giving back to the children is important. Giving back to the younger people who will carry it on longer than you and I, that's very important because yeah. basket makers are aging out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm, I've been so encouraged as I've been doing online basket courses and getting, you mm -hmm. know, more in the mm -hmm. online world with what I do is, you know, because I've been kind of in the commission gallery world and all that. But as I've right. kind of used you know, this technology to, to get back out there, there's, I'm so encouraged. There are just droves and droves of young people uh, all over the world that are interested in wild basketry and going out and foraging materials and, and that sort of thing. And I'm just like, yep, this thing's gonna, gonna keep going. And I think the more we can pass along what we've figured out along the way and, and use that to inspire others uh, even, even more so, so. It is, we're gonna have that world basket making day, hopefully this year, Laura Lee Zanger. I love um, it. I'm going to get a bunch of different groups started. Well, Nancy, you know, I would love uh, the opportunity. I don't know if you've got the uh, the ability to share kind of a little bit of what's going on in your studio there, but I know you make it home and you've also got a building next to you and that sort of thing. But uh, what kind of stuff are you working on right now uh, in the studio? Well, I have a lot of what I call, I have a lot of what I call sweepings, the leftovers that the kids don't do right. And why throw that big pile away yeah. when you can coil it into a basket? Love so it. I am dyeing the leftovers now, and I'm making some Easter egg baskets of pretty pastel colors. Nice. That's what I'm working on right now. Nice. But I will take you for a walk. I've got to leave here and go into my gallery. Yeah. And I can show you some of my work. Yeah, Would I'd you love to. Bear with me a minute. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I'm going through the house here. I work in <laughs> lots of different rooms, upstairs, downstairs, outside. I love it. My hallway. Oh, and look at that. Now, see, I, you got to go back. I just saw that big lighting piece right there. Look at that. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I love it. yeah nice. Lots of little lamps because not everybody wants a five footer, you know? That's right. So, you can see. so here are some of the lamps. Oh, look at it. I love it. I love it. That are kudzu. Yep. So cool. Do I've you find the smaller ones one sell quicker or the bigger ones sell quicker? Or they're kind of even? Well, here in my gallery, I don't sell as much. So I'm thinking now at the marquee, I'll yeah. have a better chance of people seeing different kinds of things. Yeah. Okay, I'll go. Hmm. So cool. Oh yeah, beautiful. Is that, are those all pine needle? They look like you're dyeing them different colors or what is that? I sell with black and white black needles. Those are all the things I dye. Um, some of them have the, oh, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to show you some of the sculptures. Yeah. Let me see. I don't know how to turn that thing around. You, uh, had, a, you had a big eagle at one time. Do you have that still? Oh, it's still here. Is yeah. <laughs> Trying to get it. Let's see, where is it? It's yeah. showing in the back. Okay, hold on. There you go. Now I can see it behind you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? That's the eagle. And then the octane is in back of me. Yeah. And that's the big dragon. 
Okay, yeah, keep going a little bit more over there. Oh, there it is. Wow, wow. Something yeah. else. And the lights are on and it's eyes. Oh, and wow. It's eight feet long. It's just hard for me to see. Yeah. So cool. Oh, there, there's the body of it. See it? Have yeah. it down. And that's all coiled, right? Yep. Yeah. It took a long time. Yeah. About a year. Because you can't work on it at once. I had to take a little bit of time off. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, Nancy, I like to end with two questions. And um, okay. I, I want to ask number one, just kind of, you've given so many already, but is there one tip that you think, man, this is, if you're starting out making baskets, you need to keep this in mind. And then number two, what do you wish you had known however many years ago when you started that, that you know now that you might tell your younger self about making it? Don't be afraid to experiment. Please don't think that your first basket needs to be museum quality. Yeah, yeah. You have to have some learning in there somewhere. Give yourself a break. Um, experiment with what you have in your backyard. That's what our ancestors would have done and what they did do a long time ago. You mentioned uh, the Earth Skills events and the powwows that I go to. We celebrate everybody's ancestry from wherever you came from however long ago we all did the same things we built homes and got food shelter um, clothing and we had to gather things and we used what we had in our backyard so yeah. start there yeah uh, read some good books listen to you um, on your podcast and schools and be um be adventurous yeah yeah, that's so good. Well, Nancy, I love your adventure. I love just the freedom in which you share your journey. And um, you are a, a mother to artists and to makers all over the place. You've been an inspiration to me for years. And thank you so much for uh, sharing your journey here inside the Basket Maker Studio. So thanks so much. Now, where can, thank you. Where can folks get in touch with you? Because I know folks are going to be like, where's her what's her website and can i follow her on instagram okay. and all that sort of thing so where's the best place i can get in touch with you nancybasket.com love it and that's love got it. all my information right there i've gone paperless <laughs> with you know cards come love on it. down i've got my uh, studio here we can have tours just call me up it's online love it love it nancy basket thank you so much for being on the show today and thank you matt see you later